This is the 2019 Volkswagen Jetta GLI 35th anniversary. Hey folks, I'm Rob. And I'm Nathan. And we are Two, Two Guys and a ride. ride. Nathan, today we've got this beautiful 2019 Volkswagen Jetta, but it's referred to as the GLI, and this is the 35th anniversary edition. Yep. So I'm gonna take you on a tour of the outside, talk about its styling, its cargo capacity, its dimensions, its horsepower, its specs and, and all. And Nathan? I'm gonna take you for a tour on the inside and show you uh, all the whole interior along with the uh, technology and some of the safety features on this vehicle. Okay. Hey folks, remember to click on the subscribe button down below if you like our videos, as well as click on the notification bell at the top and then follow us on Facebook and Tumblr and uh, let's see, Pinterest. Instagram. And Instagram and Facebook. Right. right. And give us some likes on our video yep. and leave some comments down below if you like what you see. Ah, so what do you say, okay. Nathan? Let's, Let's go, go for a ride. ride. Today we're, we are with our friends at Mankato Motors and this is Mankato Volkswagen. I do like the sort of the flat, right, it's got a linear look to yeah, it, but it's yeah, got yeah, some yeah. sculptured uh, rises and falls to it. Um, soft touch materials on the dashboard, on the top, on the um, armrest. You do have hard material, hard plastic right by the uh, the grab handle and the window switch. But the armrest on the door is nice and padded and soft. Um, Headroom, plenty. I know. Leg room. It's, it's, it's actually. I mean, it's. Yeah. It's maybe more than you'd expect, but what's that? Four inches. And I'm five eleven and a half, so that's quite a bit of uh, headroom. Leg room, of course, the front is, is just fine. I'll show you more about leg room on the interior review in the back and headroom, but it's going to be fairly spacious. I like how the center um, console and the buttons, switches, and all the knobs, and the entertainment, infotainment system are all canted toward the driver. So all the instruments and everything are all driver-centric. I like yep. that. It's very clear, laid-out dashboard, too. It is. It's not um, cluttered. Nope. I, I like it, you know, even in the manual, uh, even with the six shift, once you let the clutch out, yeah. it tells you what gear you're in. It's it's remarkably quiet. I, I it is figured for a, again a, a small car that it would be bouncy. It would be thundering loud with the the highway noise, the tires and everything. Oh, it's pretty uh, well insulated. I'm pleasantly surprised. Let's see what it feels like because it feels yeah. pretty comfortable so far. The it seats, feels really comfortable. The seats are cloth in this, yeah. uh, but they've got a little, couple of bolsters on them. And it, but they are it's pretty comfortable. The only thing I don't like, and this you're going to get this with the stick shift, you've got your cup holders way back here to where you have to, you know, it just doesn't necessarily fall to hand. You've got to bring your arm and your shoulder back, cock your elbow to the back seat to grab uh, your drink and a cup holder. It comes with old age. Well, oh, it's zippy. Oh, it is, and, and uh, first gear is real zippy, and wow, the minute you pop it into second, you're, it's, it's got plenty of get up and go. Yeah, you won't <laughs> you won't be disappointed at all with the driving experience. No, and I that do, is really fun. I do like the steering wheel. Again, it's nicely padded. It's a thicker wheel. It's got nice hand and thumb grips, and it's a flat bottom steering wheel too. Uh, yeah, we've we've uh, seen a few cars that are more sporting uh, that uh, have the flat bottom sport steering wheel, and that's pretty cool. All right, let's see on the acceleration. out here and I just hit to 65 so very precise steering I mean it's oh yeah yeah yep and, you know more and more cars that we're reviewing uh, you know 
they don't wander around like they did in the no. 70s and 80s and even the 90s. I mean, the, the preciseness of the steering is just spot on. Yeah, I gotta say, I'm I'm very impressed with the ride, but then again, I guess I shouldn't be because again, German engineering. Volkswagens have always had a nice, um, sporty ride. Yeah, yeah unless, you know, discounting the Beetle for the '60s and '70s and yeah, stuff. Yeah. But um, yeah, these they've always had a precise German feel to them, obviously. Uh, but you just get that extra little bit of precision and and ride quality that you wouldn't expect in a smaller car. Yeah. I like all the red stitching on the uh, I just noticing that as it's looking. Well too. I know if you can see it in the oh, camera, yeah, I you probably can. Yep, yep. Okay. Um, there's red stitching in the seats and we'll see that when we do oh, the Oh, is there? That's, that's yep. why I was looking around. There's none of that yep. on the dashboard or anywhere else, but there is on the no, wheel. No, it's actually on the outer edge of the seat. It's ah, not on the inside of the okay. seat where you would expect it. Right. But it is front and back. Okay. So you do get it both places. It adds a nice touch. Okay. Trunk, you've got room in the back uh, for two adults or possibly three kids if need be. Uh, definitely something you could take on a trip easily. And again, with the fuel mileage that you're going to get on this, you know, you, you may want to take it on a trip. Enjoy it. Yeah, it would be a comfortable car to take for a yeah, long, I think long so. ride. I think so. All right, here we go on Rod's brake test. Whoa! Holy cow. That was that was quick. Pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Whoa. That was. Alright, acceleration. <laughs> I told you that second gear is fun. That's all I wanted. I don't need to go any further. Just to chirp the tire a little bit in second gear. So it's definitely got the pep. It's got the torque, yeah, the horsepower. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. But wow. This is really fun. I like yeah. it. I like the car. I think it's comfortable. The acceleration is spot on for what you've got here. Uh, the braking felt secure and safe. Um, you know, and I, I do. I feel comfortable in this car and I feel safe in this car. I think it's... I it's, know. It's, He's it's, it's driving. <laughs> this vehicle starts at 26995 Now, it's powered by a 2-liter inline 4-cylinder engine, 16-valve TSI putting out 228 horsepower, 258 pound-foot of torque. There is either a six-speed manual or a seven-speed DSG automatic transmission with Tiptronic and Sport Mode. And I gotta say, folks, today we got the six-speed manual and it is sweet. Nice uptake, really peppy, short throws, fantastic transmission. Now, fuel mileage is estimated at 25 city, 32 highway, 28 combined. This vehicle is front wheel drive, front suspension, strut type of lower control arms, coral springs, telescopic dampers, 24 millimeter diameter anti-roll bar. Rear suspension is multi-link with coral springs, telescopic dampers, and a 21.7 millimeter di uh, diameter anti-roll bar. Brakes are power assisted dual circuit, 13.4 by 1.2 inch vented front disc, and 11.8 solid rear disc. You do have anti-lock braking standard, all four, four wheels, four channel with electronic brake pressure distribution. Now on the front end you have the black honeycomb grille with red accents and of course this is the 35th anniversary and it is the GLI edition so you do get the GLI uh, badging, uh, the 35th anniversary GLI badging does have automatic headlights, LED projector headlights with LED daytime running lights. Uh, does have LED license plate lighting as well. It does have DCC adaptive chassis control, electromechanical progressive power steering, rain sensing wipers, heated side mirrors, and you can see five spoke gray painted with red accent alloy wheels. Riding on 18 inch by 7.5 J aluminum alloy wheels with 225 45 R18 91H all season tires. This vehicle does have electronic stability control, anti slip regulation, electronic differential lock, and engine brake assist. Anti lock brakes, electronic brake pressure distribution, and hydraulic brake assist. Around back, you do have the LED taillights. 
you do have as you see below there you do have the chrome dual exhaust with lower uh, rear lower diffuser now on the inside 14.1 cubic feet of cargo capacity as well i'll give you a shot of that there's a lot of cool details on this i'll pull this down real quick to show you, you know it's got the rear view camera of course that's mandated on all vehicles now you do have the uh, lip spoiler on the hood. I do like the tail lights. I like the amber uh, blended into the red of the brake and tail lights and, uh, to add for the turn signal. And then of course down below you see your um, diffuser and you see your exhaust tips and of course the um, reflector there. On the styling, I really do think it's kind of cool. I like the gas filler cap cover it kind of slants back and it gives the car like a sense of motion that's pretty cool i like that <laughs> actually it's it's a it's a detail you think they could have just made a square cover but no they actually put some detail in it and made it kind of slanted back to where it gives it a little bit of forward motion you do see again the the gli uh, 35th anniversary badging on the front and it's real cool with the black wheels you've got the chrome trim but then you have the red caliper covers now these are not brembo brakes but it is a cool looking feature and you can see the nice detail in the headlights and you can see the uh the red uh, strip across the grill that of course has been a gli standout trademark look uh, for 35 years you i like the cut lines and the crease lines and the hood that gives it a lot of uh, structural rigidity I do like the uh, indicators in the uh, outdoor outside mirrors. And then on the doors, if you'll look, there is a little groove here that when you've got the key fob in your pocket, all you gotta do is just come up, hold your finger, lock and unlock the car. So it's really cool. A lot of good lines on this vehicle. Um, I like the sharp creases. I'll get back over in, onto the sunny side to show you a couple of those lines and how sharp the creases are. And you gotta think, uh, modern manufacturing techniques are so good that you're able to take a fender and line it up with a door and it matches extremely nicely right on that sharp crease and you've got a few of those. So you've got this really cool line coming from the hood and the lights that blends in and goes over this piece all the way back and then just kind of disappears right here in the C pillar. And then you've got this belt line crease that goes all the way around starting at the GLI badging around the back over to the other side of the car at the GLI badging. And then if you go, you've got the, uh, the cut lines at the bottom for more detail as well. Overall, nicely done. I like the styling, very German. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of uh, sedate, but yet sporty. So it's typical German styling. Very well done. I like it. Okay, so Nathan, here we go. I think it's time. I uh, gave the folks a tour of the outside of the car. I think it's time you can take them for a tour of the inside. Well, it's about time we get to the important part. <laughs> he's been hanging out over here in the, under a shade tree, but uh, he's going to take you inside, give you all there it the is. Uh, technology and features. Thanks oh. for showing up. All right, we're done. That's it, folks. No, no, we're going to hang around, and Nathan's going to take you for a review of the inside. Take it away, Nathan. Thank you. All righty. All right, stepping onto the inside of the 2019 GLI, or sometimes known as the Jetta GLI. We've got your window controls right here, and we've got your window lockout right here, and then your mirror controls right here, and then you have to twist the knob all the way around to put your heated mirrors on. Okay, we got a nice satin looking um, stainless steel kind of look here on the, on the door handle, and then your lock buttons and your trunk release. Got the sun right there. There you go. And then you've got some storage down here. Could be for a bottle right here and then some extra storage down here. Okay, now with the GLI package, you do get this insert right here with the GLI 35 for 35th anniversary. You also get the GLI 35 floor mats uh, front and rear. And you also get uh, the seats here are tagged with the GLI 35 tag, which is really nice. All right, so the seat itself on the driver's side is a six-way manual adjuster. So it's either up or down. And this, of course, reclines the seat 
and then you have forwards and backwards. So that's a six-way, and then I'll show you the passenger that's a four-way in a minute. All right, moving over here. Uh, this is your trunk release over here. You got a nice footrest. I really like the aluminum pedals. Um, that's a nice touch. This does have auto lights. That little light there is actually your mirror indicator. So when you turn your turn signals on, you can see that they're flashing right in that little spot. Uh, but it does have blind spot monitoring. It does have rear cross traffic uh, warning and alert. And uh, you can make some of those settings in your infotainment screen. It also has a tilt and telescoping steering wheel right there. Okay, right. I'm going to climb in and take a look at it. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start it up here. And uh, you do have to have not only the brake, but the clutch depressed. And then it is a push start. All right, there's all your dummy lights over there. All right, so over here, of course, you got your RPM and your engine temperature, as well as your speedometer and your fuel tank uh, as a standard analog gauges. And then you have your driver's information screen here. And we'll go through that a little bit. Um, I really like the red accents and the red and the white along with the black. Uh, it gives a nice sporty look. Over here on the steering wheel, for the most part, the buttons on the left are cruise control and volume. Okay, so you have cruise control on or off here. And you can see the speedometer appear or disappear depending on if it's on or off. You have the set button, the resume button, the cancel button, and then increase speed or decrease speed on your cruise control. Okay, these are your volume down and volume up buttons. And then right here, this gives you a quick look at your safety systems that are activated. So if I press it, you can see that I've got blind spot is on, the rear cross traffic is on, the front assist is on, meaning it's looking to avoid a collision, and it does have autonomous braking if necessary. Okay, if I click that on and then I go over to the right button, see and I scroll, okay, I can turn those on or off by clicking the OK button here, and you'll see that check mark disappear. There we go. And then click it again to turn it back on. So it's just a kind of a one uh, quick one glance look to see what uh, safety systems are activated. Over here is your voice command button. Uh, you have got the cursors here, the OK button, and then these two left and right buttons. Um, all that um, and all these buttons work to manage the information and change it and manipulate it in your driver's information center. So. If I take these two buttons and I just start scrolling up, I can see I got my miles per hour, my oil temperature, economy if I was driving, um, I got range, uh, travel time, distance, speed, and then back to miles per hour. So it does have a digital speedometer in addition to the analog one. If I go to the left button right here, I get or the right button, it doesn't matter, I can go to either one. I can go to telephone, audio, assist systems, driving data, and vehicle status. Okay, I can get to those anytime by toggling these two buttons here. If I want to enter that particular menu, I press the OK button. So let's go over here and we'll go to say driving, oops, not driving data, assist systems. There we go, press OK. And then you're going to see the same things that you saw when I pressed this button here, just a different way to access it. Okay, and I click the view button. It brings me to the sort of like the last page I was on in the menu. So that's kind of like almost like a what did I do last button? All right, these buttons have to do with your media player. They will change your radio stations. Okay, so if I'm in, let's go over here to select the audio. And it's interesting, there are two ways to change radio stations. You can use these two buttons or these two. Now, if you use these two, you don't necessarily see, um, you just see what, it, what it's changed to. If you use the vertical buttons, you actually see a much larger list of, of stations. Okay, so it's just kind of two different ways to look at the same thing. Uh, depends on what you like. All right. Uh, that being said, in addition to those things, you have got your temperature, your cruise on or off setting, what your cruise is set at, that's for that MPH with the dash, dash, dash under it, and then, of course, the um, trip, current trip, which is 67.1 miles. 
Moving over here to the infotainment screen, uh, we are going to go, uh, there is no home button on this radio, so that's a little little different from than uh, what I'm used to seeing, but let's go to car, and then you have little arrows here you can toggle between things and get some information. Okay, if I go over to selection here, and I'm still under car, I can look at four different things, Ener energy consumers, driving data, think blue trainer, and vehicle status. So if I'm going to energy consumers, my screen changes and, and reacts to how I drive. This tells you how much your climate control is um, consuming energy. And if I look at driving data, that's what I was on before, think blue trainer, and then vehicle status. Okay, now this isn't going to be any entries available. That's something you kind of have to set up under your driver one's configuration. Okay, um, let's go to radio. That's another physical button you have up here, and that takes you directly to the radio. And then you have your presets up here. You can change your frequencies, AM, FM, right here. You can take a look at stations right in a different list. Kind of gives you the names right there. I'm going to go back up button here. You can tune it manually. And then you use this dial right here. So you have that old fashioned uh, tuning capability. If I press the arrow, I can also tune. So lots of, lots of different ways to do the same thing. So you can see it changes up here too. All right, so that's radio, but I can also go to media. That's my other physical button up here. And I have a choice of SD card, USB, or Bluetooth. Okay, it says it's already currently set on radio. Okay, so uh, I'll show you where that SD card is in a little bit here and uh, where you can plug in the USB Bluetooth. Obviously, you just do it wirelessly. Okay, and then you got some play next and back buttons. The other thing you have up here is a little setup button and you can go to your sound settings here and adjust the following things. Okay, uh, you can uh, look for your paired devices in here. And then um, you can set some uh, settings here like mix or repeat, including subfolders. This would be if you have like MP3s on your um, SD card. Okay, so let's go back and let's go over. There are three more buttons here. So let's go up to phone. No phone is paired. So, but if it was, this is where you would uh, control that. You can take a look at uh, the apps. This does have Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, and then MirrorLink. MirrorLink is basically the same thing as Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, maybe not to the extent. It doesn't have all the same capabilities, but if you don't have an Apple phone or an Android phone, use MirrorLink. Okay, and then the last one is setup. This is where you go to your you know, sound settings, your screen settings, time and day, that kind of stuff. Moving on down here, of course, you got your air vents, you got your hazards right here, and then down here you have dual uh, climate control systems. Uh, so, uh, if you want to adjust the driver's side and passenger side at the same time, it's just a rotary knob, and then passenger, of course, can just change theirs. You can see the numbers are different there. And then if you want to sync it, you just press the sync button right here, and they both go back to the same temperature. Turn it off. Here's where your fan speed is, your different modes. This car does have heated seats. So you've got the button here for the left and the button here for the right. And then of course your other air conditioning and climate control uh, selections. Um, you do have auto temperature control. So you can just click that and it goes right to auto. And you can also click on menu and menu brings up this screen. Okay, and then you can see what's going on in each of the areas here. It's kind of cool graphic there. Okay, moving down here, you've got a nice storage tray here. And down here, you do have a USB uh, input. This is where you can connect to uh, Apple CarPlay or Android Auto or MirrorLink. I do like the non-skid rubberized uh, pieces at the bottom, of course, which is, of course, removable so you can clean it. Your uh, push button start stop. This is your parking brake. These are your different modes. So if I press this, you get, not only does it show up in this screen right here, but it shows up in this screen right here. 
So right now I'm in Sport. If I press again, I go to Custom, which then you can set Eco, Comfort, or Normal. Okay, and again, they just they show up here as well. All right. Now, um, this is traction control on or off, and then you have a 12 volt uh, outlet right here. Beautiful, six speed with reverse manual gearbox. It's a ni nice handle, easy, grippy, um, works well. You have a little extra storage right here. You have dual cup holders right here. Okay, moving over here to the glove compartment. You've got a very large glove compartment, much larger than most cars that we see. Ample room. Moving up to the top, you've got an electrochromatic mirror, and you, of course, have your lights up here, dome lights. Um, this is to set it whether it comes on with the doors open or not. Um, then you have each individual light, and then you have your rear uh, lamp here, or more or less in the center. But um, hey, the rear view, uh, the rear view mirrors have that nice little clip to, uh, you know, add a, a, your life driver's license or uh, insurance papers to and they slide open. They're not backlit. Eh, but each side is the same. And they are telescoping. We're gonna take a look at the center armrest storage right under here in its cavernous. And now, for the first time in a long time, it's gray and it's a light gray. So we've commented on this, I've commented on this a little bit before, but you know, now I can actually see what's in the bottom instead of being black on the inside, which I really, really like. You can flip these little switches up or down. If you do that and you set it back down, cords can, you know, things can hang out up here. Or Hey, over on the passenger side here, we see we've got the sort of the same door design and you've got uh, the nice deep storage right here. Okay, on the passenger side, it's just a four-way adjustment. So you've got the um, recline here and then the forward and back um, release on that side right over there. All right, let's step in the back. All right, stepping into the back of the 2019 GLI. Uh, we've got a little speaker in the door right here. You've got your window control and you've got some storage including what could be a bottle holder up here But the same design kind of coming through here and another speaker in the door right there Okay, in a general overlook here are the uh, GLI mats uh, The rear ones do not say GLI 35 on them, but they are black with red trim and they look really sharp Okay, there is one seat back pocket on the passenger side there are no additional controls or uh, features on the back of the uh, center armrest. Um, the seats themselves continue with this red stitching, which we saw on the front. You know, here's the front seats as well. It's right on the edge of them, and it looks really nice. I also like the light gray piping that they put in there, right here. Okay. And then is this is a 60-40 split folding seat, so you can fold this down to get more access and more room in the trunk. And it does have a pull-down armrest. All right, so on the inside, in the back of the 2019 GLI, uh, you, you can tell uh, inches, you know, it's a good fingers. So about three inches worth of um, headspace, so more than enough. And then you can see my knees down here are plenty. Hey, folks, I'm Rob. And I'm Nathan. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> hey, folks, I'm Mark Twain. <laughs> I got nothing. <laughs> I'm Rob. I'm George Washington. <laughs> He's George Washington. <laughs> uh, the whole interior along with the uh, technology and some of the safety features on this vehicle. Okay. And what else do you have to say? <laughs> hey, don't forget to click on the subscribe button. <laughs> Click on that subscribe button. Yeah. <laughs> hey, folks, don't forget to sit. <laughs> I can't get it. All right, here we go. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to get it. Hey, folks, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, by Become a channel friend or yeah. channel. Yep.
Well, this is this is a, this is actually the millennial theft deterrent system. <laughs> Uh, it's not a joke, but not really. I mean, I'm just saying because Volkswagen's uh, advertising it that way. Um, 